Turning now to your community focus, with each passing hour, the possibility of a government shutdown becomes more real. So will lawmakers in D.C. reach a compromise by Saturday night or will the clock run out? Joining us now live from the Capitol Rotunda is Congressman Seth Magaziner. And Congressman, I want to dive right in. I will admit last week at this time when I spoke with your colleague, Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss, I thought a deal was going to be struck imminently, but obviously that didn't happen. So how likely is it, do you think, that the government is going to shut down this weekend? Well, we need to do everything we can to prevent a shutdown because a government shutdown would be disastrous for working people in Rhode Island. Military families could go without pay, TSA agents, federal law enforcement, and a whole bunch of others. And um, unfortunately, right now, a shutdown is looking likely because a small number of about a dozen of the most extreme House Republicans uh, are threatening to shut down the government uh, unless their extreme demands are met. Extreme demands like a 30 percent cut to education funding, huge cuts to health care, and things that are just unreasonable. So what needs to happen is Speaker McCarthy needs to work with Democrats on a bipartisan solution to end this shutdown. Uh, there is no Democrat-only or Republican-only solution. The only way for this to work is for Democrats and Republicans to work together across the aisle. Uh, I'm committed to doing my part, uh, to helping us get a agreement uh, so that we can avoid a shutdown that would be uh, really painful for a lot of Rhode Island families. But my colleagues need to get serious and stop the games. And the speaker needs to not let a small group of the most radical members of his caucus uh, hold the rest of Congress and indeed the rest of our country hostage as they've been threatening to do. And just quickly before we move on to another topic, you said in your first answer there, it's looking likely that the government is going to shut down. And you touched on this a little bit and you had a press conference on this topic this morning. But what are your greatest concerns in terms of who here in Rhode Island is going to be impacted if this does happen? Well, again, as it stands right now, uh, military families uh, could go without their paychecks. Uh, really, almost all federal employees. So, uh, you know, the people who work uh, in the Social Security office, uh, that could impact the timeliness of people getting their Social Security benefits processed. Uh, so it could impact seniors. Uh, Head Start, uh, the program that helps young children, uh, particularly from lower income families, get access to early childhood education. Uh, that funding could dry up. A and again, if there was a clean bill on the floor today to keep the government open, the vast majority of Republican and Democratic members would vote in favor of it. Unfortunately, it's only about a dozen holdouts that Speaker McCarthy seems to be beholden to uh, that are holding this up. And so my message again to him is uh, stop the politics, stop catering to the most extreme members of the Republican caucus, and instead let's work together the vast majority of Republicans and Democrats who want to work together in a bipartisan way to keep the government open. Uh, switching gears, Congressman, 125 people were killed today in a blast in Azerbaijan. It happened in a region where ethnic Armenians are fleeing after a 10-month blockade was lifted. We don't yet know the cause of this blast, but are you satisfied with the recent developments in this conflict and how the U.S. is responding? Well, I'm a, me a member of the House Armenian Caucus and have been engaged on the Artsakh issue since I got here. And I can tell you right now that the actions of Azerbaijan uh, to launch military action uh, against the ethnic Armenians in Artsakh uh, is completely um, irresponsible and unacceptable. And the United States and our allies around the world uh, need to put pressure on Azerbaijan uh, to uh, come back to the table, work with Armenia, work with the people in Artsakh uh, to restore peace. Um, this is a terrible situation. It's also, frankly, a failure of the Russian peacekeepers who were supposed to broker a deal to maintain stability in Artsakh. Um, but we've got to look ahead, and we have got to put pressure on Azerbaijan. I'm joining an effort with a number of other members of Congress uh, to say that uh, we should not, as a country, be pro uh, providing any more aid, military or otherwise, to Azerbaijan until they end this violence. And Congressman, just quickly, we've got about 15 seconds, another overseas conflict. I think a lot more people are familiar with the war between Russia and Ukraine, additional U.S. funding for Ukraine, a major sticking point in this ongoing debate over government funding. Do you think it's worth putting that money on the chopping block to keep the government open? Make no mistake, it is in America's national security interest 
to support the people of Ukraine in their fight for freedom against Russia. If Putin is allowed to roll through Ukraine, he will not stop there. He will continue to march through Europe, destabilizing the whole region and American security interests as well. So we should continue to support the people of Ukraine as they fight for their freedom and their democracy uh, from this illegal invasion. All right, Congressman Seth Magaziner, live from the Rotunda in Washington. Thanks so much for your time.